What is mental illness? According to National Alliance on Mental Illness, it's defined as a condition that affects a person's thinking, feeling, or mood for a sustained period of time that negatively impacts them. You might be wondering, is depression a mental illness? What about anxiety? Yes, they are. In fact, they're the most common types of mental illnesses. In this video, Psych2Go covers 10 of the most common types of mental illnesses. One, anxiety disorders. We know 18.1% doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the number of adults in the US who suffer from anxiety disorders. 40 million people suffer from symptoms of an anxiety disorder every year. Of those 40 million people, it's estimated that only 36.9% of them will get help. Anxiety disorders rarely appear alone, with depression being a common co-diagnosis. Anxiety disorders come in a few varieties, generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, SAD, and obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. So, what do all these anxiety disorders have in common? They're all characterized by nearly uncontrollable worry that messes with several aspects of daily life, such as sleep, relationships, school, and work. The good news is there are several treatment options available, which include different types of therapy and medication. Two, personality disorders. What does it mean when someone's personality is disordered? Personality disorders refer to behavioral, emotional, and thought patterns that deviate greatly from the expectations of an individual's culture. The National Institute of Mental Health suggests that 9.1 of the population has the traits of a personality disorder. So what does this look like in real life? Could anyone who's a little different be diagnosed with a personality disorder? Well, according to the diagnostic criteria in the DSMV, these differences must be causing the individual significant amounts of distress in the way they see themselves, others, and situations, inappropriate or exaggerated emotional responses, impulse control, and how well the individual relates to and functions around others. Personality disorders can't be cured, but thankfully they can be treated. This treatment consists of combinations of medications for the underlying mental health issues, as well as talk therapy. Three, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. If we say ADHD, what comes to mind? The stereotype of a person diagnosed with ADHD is usually a small child who's bouncing off the walls or can't finish a task. However, between 7.8 and 11% of children aged 4 to 17 are diagnosed with ADHD any given year. ADHD affects people of all ages and includes multiple symptoms, such as inability to concentrate, forgetfulness, inability to sit still, restlessness, and losing things. An individual's symptoms vary depending on their age, gender, and type of ADHD. Did you know there's actually three recognized types of ADHD? They're ADHD, combined type ADHD, impulsive hyperactive type, and ADHD inattentive and distractible type. Most people think meds are the only way to control ADHD, but many people diagnosed with the disorder find relief by using a combination of medications, life coaching, education, and talk therapy. Four, post-traumatic stress disorder. Did you know that an estimated 6.8% of the US population will develop some form of post-traumatic stress disorder? That's about 19 million people in the US alone. So how does this happen? You, me, everybody will get stressed out by something in our lives. Some people will come across something so stressful that it affects them permanently. For many of them, this stress becomes trauma. A traumatic event is considered any event that should not have happened such as a natural disaster, an assault, childhood neglect, abuse, starvation, and so on. Stress is a completely normal reaction to trauma, but what happens when the threat is gone? The stress and trauma stops on its own for most people when the mind and body understand the individual is no longer under attack. But what if the mind and body don't get the memo? Post-traumatic stress disorder reverts to a prolonged fight or flight response that happens after the stressful event has stopped. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder, CPTSD, refers to the PTSD that occurs due to a series of continued traumatic events, such as childhood abuse. Think of PTSD and CPTSD as the echoes of the stress response. 
These echoes can happen in the form of emotional flashbacks, nightmares, extreme anxiety or panic, difficulties connecting to others, and an overwhelming sense of fear. So how does someone get help for something so overwhelming? People suffering from PTSD or CPTSD can find relief through trauma therapies, such as eye movement desensitization reprocessing, EMDR, or traditional talk therapies, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, or dialectical behavior therapy, DBT. Five, depression. An estimated 6.7% of the US population over the age of 18, 15.7 million people live with depression. Although the occasional low mood is a normal response to negative situations, depression entails low moods that are severe and last longer than six weeks. Depression manifests differently in women than men. Women tend to experience depression as feelings of sadness, worthlessness, and shame or guilt. Men tend to mistake the symptoms of depression as fatigue and being easily irritated. Common treatments for depression include cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, interpersonal therapy, IPT, psychodynamic therapy, 